Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dai Chronicles here on this Destiny 2 video, and today we're going to be going over my top five favorite Warlock exotics in Destiny 2. And of course, this video is going to be a completely subjective list of my own opinion of these exotics and how I use them in the different activities from a plethora of different activities from Iron Banner to public events, raids, and all that whatnot, with a bit of a focus on PvE because that is the mode that I play the most. Of course, if you have your own list or certain items that were not on this list that you want me to reconsider, let me know in the comments down below why you would use them and how they are better in certain aspects than the ones I have chosen. Throughout the video, we'll be seeing different excerpts of information from my spreadsheet that I've created for this video, detailing different perk inf information, my recommendations for that armor, on all the other armor, best mods, all the whatnot, all color coded, and it's all this beautiful goodness with pictures and all that whatnot for every exotic for the Warlock. And if you wanted to get your hands on that, make sure you stay till the end of the video. We'll be talking about how you can get it fully public for you guys to use. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into number five in this top five countdown. It's going to be the exotic helmet known as Skull of Darhamkara and I've got to say this helmet is a bit underrated everybody pretty much dropped this thing ever since it got nerfed with all the super nerfs but you really got to get back and give this thing another try so if you did not know what this exotic does is provides additional damage resistance when using Nova Bomb and Nova Bomb kills grant super energy before last season you could literally throw this Nova Bomb at like one yellow health enemy two red health enemies and get your entire super back off of these guys maybe a little bit more than that but it was like the thing you just launch a nova bomb kill a bunch of people you get the full nova bomb back and ever since you know the nova bomb buffs a couple seasons ago people have been absolutely tearing it up with the new cataclysm nova bomb now it cannot really give you a full super back off of this nova bomb it's pretty much uh, the highest you can really get is around half to maybe 75 percent of your super from a lot of kills but that is still very significant. It's the same reasoning that I use with Shards of Galanor is you're still getting a super energy back and that is significant, especially when the super is all about just doing damage and just dumping that out. If you're using Nova Bomb, this is gonna be your best in class. Moving on to number four in this top five countdown, you have the exotic legs known as the Transversive Steps, an exotic that came out with the base game, has actually received a buff since it released, allowing you to reload weapons while you're sprinting on top of just adding sprint speed. This is going to be your sprint boots, plus your escape boots, plus your I like to do things at close range like shotguns and automatically reload stuff all the time boots. Transversive Steps, in my opinion, is going to be your best in class for just universal everything. It's great for PvP, allowing you to get into battles quickly, reload your shotguns as you're approaching, escape battles. It's also really great in PvE. In fact, you can literally run around faster than everyone else. You can get to the objective faster and, of course, escape damage faster. There's all great things in both modes. And this thing is exactly what you'd expect it to be, exactly what you want it to be. And is just a fantastic exotic. And as a last note about this exotic is that you really shouldn't underestimate speed. Now, personally, I don't use a lot of mobility stats in a lot of my builds, but having boots like this allowing you to go just a little bit faster, escape danger, get into fights, being able to automatically reload weapons is a very powerful utility that you really cannot underestimate. Moving on to number three in this top five countdown, we have the exotic chess piece known as Phoenix Protocol. Now, if you've seen my videos before, last season, I placed this exotic at literally number one out of all the Warlock exotics in the game because I consider a Tombman of Grace the super and the subclass node for the Warlock the best super in the entire game allowing you near invincibility while standing on it with the insane healing and overshield allowing you to do extra weapon damage while on it allowing you to basically have so much utility in so many different things it was just impossible to defeat. So what exactly does the Phoenix Protocol do? Its main perk allows kills and assists that you make while standing in your well return super energy which is slightly changed than it was before Four, used to be that any of your teammates kills also counted but you actually have to be part of the kills actually getting the assist to be able to do it with this exotic it allows you to have your super more often more frequently in lots of different encounters including the reckoning bridge if using bad juju with this item you can have literally a well of radiance on every single one of those control points with all this in consideration i still consider the tomb of grace to be the best super in the entire game so why did phoenix protocol drop to number three i would say in general phoenix protocol is not really used for Ray DPS, and even now, the Ray DPS you have to be using Weapons of Light Bubble to be able to accomplish the best damage source that you can. And with that, it kind of drops the reliance on having as many wells as you possibly can, and more so on having a faster reload time with the Lunafaction boost. 
and instead chaining wells and rift just for that reload bonus and a slight bit of healing. Even then, this exotic is absolutely incredible, just using it casually for literally anything you want, allowing you to get extra supers if you're standing in it, getting kills, assists. It, like I've always said, getting extra super energy while using your super is significantly powerful, especially if you like having intellect on your gear, you might as well go with the super exotic. Moving on to number two in this top five countdown are going to be the exotic legs known as Luna Faction Boots. Now, you've probably heard me mention these a few times. If you haven't heard of them, basically your rifts gain the ability to reload your weapons as fast as possible, and empowering rifts basically double your range. Now, this exotic got a pretty big nerf with the Shadow Keep update as well as the Rally Barricades, so it's not an instant reload of your weapons. It's not just ammo directly into your magazines anymore. It's a faster reload, which caps out your reload for that weapon. Now, how is it that this exotic not only maintains a pretty powerful spot in this countdown, it's also actually moved up because Phoenix Protocol moved down. The reason for that is the fact that its utility literally hasn't changed at all. We still use Lunafaction boots to increase our reload to the maximum possible reloads in raids. So it's used in the exact same circumstances. It still doubles your range, which is a big utility that people overlook. And to be blunt about it, it's still a required exotic for doing DPS in raids for raid bosses, maybe Maybe even in strikes using them in the new master nightfalls master nightmare hunts it's required so of course it's gonna maintain its spot and actually do better now that being said I do know that well of radiance did get nerfed because it's not the most powerful weapon damage bonus but you still need it every single time, more so than that of the Phoenix Protocol. And finally, coming up at number one in this top five count, an exotic that I did not think was going to end up being at number one, the exotic helmet known as Crown of Tempest. Now, if you've never seen this exotic before, basically, it has a stackable perk called Conduction Tines, where arc ability kills increase the recharge rate of your arc abilities and extend the duration of your super. So you're using your grenades, your melee abilities, you're getting kills with those things. You can also pop your super and kills with your your super will then extend your super all of that stuff is going to be recharging your grenades and melees and you're going to be using neutral game a lot more often and you're going to have a lot longer of a super which is something extremely powerful in pvp which is where i primarily use this exotic now it's not often a pve player puts a number one exotic as his number one pvp exotic but this one has a lot of great uses and i really enjoy using it now obviously in pvp getting a grenade kill is going to be something that doesn't happen that often but if you pop your super get a kill with it that super is going to last a little bit longer you get another kill it's going to last even a little bit longer on top of that having a longer super in pvp can change the tide of getting heavy spawns getting extra kills to win the game getting control points and just in general getting a higher score line and that is something really powerful and that's going to be pretty much it for the top five for you guys today. Moving on to the spreadsheet section of my video, which you can see on screen right now with all the stuff that you're going to probably going to need to know about these exotics from what they do, where they come from, all my mod recommendations for the different exotics and the other mods that you'd use with these exotics, where it's best in subclasses, extra nodes, color coding, uh, sources, all the whatnot. Dr. D is on the case when it comes to incredible spreadsheets, as well as, by the way, my top 10. I only do top five for the video, but I have my top 10. Uh, if you want to use this spreadsheet, uh, just head over to my Discord server, which can be found in the description down below. Uh, and in my Discord server, go to the channel called hashtag YouTube underscore Twitch, and that is going to be where you can find this spreadsheet. Just go to around the date that this video came out, and you should be able to find it pretty easily. Now, one caveat to this spreadsheet is that I did not add any of these seasonal artifact mods into this list, whereas last time with the Titans, you can see the pink here, I used or I showed and I recommended a lot of seasonal armor mods, but since the next season basically starts in like a week, I decided maybe it wasn't worth the effort. But that's going to be pretty much it. That's the end of the video. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions, concerns. Let me hear those fellow warlocks out there. Personally, I'm a Titan main, but Tuna Grace is so good that I use my Warlock uh, an absolute shit ton. But anyways, that's going to be the video for you guys today. Dr. D signing off with some more spreadsheets, and I'll see you guys on the next one.